The president-elect has started sketching out some of his immigration policies. It happened in a new interview. So uh, his pledges continue for mass deportations of criminals here illegally as promised. His promises didn't stop there. You okay. promised to end birthright citizenship yeah. on day one. Is yeah. that still your plan? Yeah, absolutely. The 14th Amendment, though, says that, quote, all persons born in the United States are citizens. Can you get yeah. around the 14th Amendment with well, an executive action? we're going to have to action? get a change. We we'll maybe have to go back to the people, but we have to end it. Joining us in our fifth seat, Christina Jimenez, co-founder of United We Dream, a nonprofit immigrant advocacy organization here in the U.S. Christina, can you get your reaction to how uh, the president-elect tried to parse some of these other policies beyond the mass deportations? Well, I think I just want to remind everyone that when um, he and the future administration is talking about their immigration policy, they are talking about separation of families and going after anyone that they can get a hold to uh, for deportation. I know this because I was formerly undocumented. I have a brother who's a DACA recipient. And I know this because I was working with immigrant communities in his first administration. And so I know that under the disguise of going after people that have committed crimes, they use a frame of criminality to go after everyone. Under the past administration with Trump, DACA recipients were deported. Families were separated not only at the border um, as people came here seeking refuge, but also in, in the interior of the United States. So yeah. we're talking about children, families, and I think that we take we need to take this seriously. Scott, I want to come to you because mm -hmm. I do find it interesting that during his first term, the president did engage in this family separation policy as a deterrent, right? It was mm -hmm. like, don't come here because this will happen. And now when asked this question about families with mixed status, he didn't talk about separation, right? He was like, basically, maybe everyone should go. Do you think that reflects some kind of like... I don't know, shift after that first experience in the first term. Yeah, I thought it. I thought his answers on that and on really everything else on the immigration portion of the interview were eminently reasonable, fit with his campaign promises, are politically popular, and showed some pragmatism, even on the Dreamers issue. He talked about finding a solution for the Dreamers and an overall immigration deal. But make no mistake, the immigration platform that he laid out in the campaign is popular. People want him to do something about it. Uh, the family separation issue. I mean, he clearly said he doesn't want to separate families. So I think what he's laying out, Republicans are going to support it. You may even get a few Democrats to support it if it, if it is a comprehensive deal, which the American people desperately want. Hillary, you're shaking your head a bit. And I, I know that for Democrats, um, the whole conversation around dreamers, undocumented young people who are brought here uh, on their own, it's just been this like kind of long running saga. Can you talk about like, what is the kind of Democratic argument about this point? if Republicans believe they have a mandate to take this level of action? Well, I think Democrats should be and have been sort of much more moderate about this. Yes, asylum needs much more uh, scrutiny, and there are significant numbers of undocumented workers where people are worried um, that there is uh, criminality, but those people are actually identifiable. That is not, that does not require the sweep that I think people are legitimately afraid of. Also, I think what he didn't say was almost as important as what he did say. He seemed to imply that naturalized citizens mm -hmm. are not, don't belong in the United States. And then I thought, well, sorry, dude, aren't you married to a naturalized citizen? Are you gonna, like, is Melania and her father, are they all of a sudden not legitimate Americans? I don't, and, I, I don't think that's true. Well, I, I think no, 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 he, I'm he, sorry. His, when you talk about birthright and, and, his, and his citizenship, pro that's kind of what people are thinking his, all day. His priorities were clear. People with deportation orders, violent criminals, that's where they're going to start. And that is and that's really where they, popular. That's that where they should really end. I totally and, and agree I with that. I think there's a lot of fear-mongering going on about I the I just think that we need to, I, I do think we need to look at not only what he's saying, but what he did. Like, there's a track record. Actions speak louder than words. They went after everyone in the last administration. So I just don't think we need to fall for that trap. And on the point about, you know, DACA recipients, my brother uh, is a DACA recipient. I was, uh, you know, formerly undocumented, part of the Dreamer movement that was able to win DACA under the Trump administration. And when we engage in very credible bipartisan efforts to pass legislation, what did... Trump do, he killed every single bipartisan deal. And the last one 
let's remember, he killed it by using language I will not use here to refer to black and brown immigrants when we were talking about question. immigration policy. What we do hear are Democrats talking about, we need to be more moderate, they will say, right? We need to talk in different ways about immigration. We need to be tougher on immigration. That kind of, we need to, we need to language I'm hearing from Democrats a lot. Where does that leave an activist like yourself in the middle of this discussion? For me, I think that we need to have a real conversation about the immigration system and the laws that we need. And quite frankly, I'm not going to be here to also defend where Democrats have gone wrong on this issue. Our movement is actually quite independent, and we have been on opposite side with Democrats as well. But the thing here is that this is about a conversation, to your point about birthright citizenship, about who gets to be an American and the soul of this country. And when we're, when we're talking about taking away birthright citizenship, when we're talking about not caring about deporting children who are U.S. citizens, separating them from their parents, I think we're talking about who gets to have full protection under the Constitution. And, and I, I think that that goes to the origin of the 14th Amendment. The 14th Amendment was created for black people um, who had been enslaved, who were now free, um, it was one of the Reconstruction Amendments, the 13th, 14th, and 15th. And the 14th uh, declared birthright citizenship specifically for black people. So this isn't just a Latino issue. This is an issue about right, who Solomon, you go after when you're finished with the Latinos. Parliament, who do you, who do you on, go after, on, hold on. after after you, after you give, do that? This, this give is your something race that a little bit people, more credit. This is, this is something that black people should be very okay. concerned but, about. Okay. You're, Solomon, you're, hold you're, on. Black, black people, black people weren't, run, weren't running here, okay? They were taken here. There is a big difference between being pulled out of your continent into this continent and you deserve rights versus people who are coming into this country with out of being by the laws. Why was the first 14th Amendment created? To help the people who were brought here against their will. Right. Okay? And who these are, those are people, people? These are people, the black people. Okay. These are people and who so are coming here. That's why I'm making the they're, point they're that They're coming I'm here making. voluntarily against the law. They're, Christina, what you said about the system was being broken. Was it lawful to enslave black Nobody could people. disagree with you. Yeah, no, it's not. No, no, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's Look, all of us here benefit from immigrant labor. I was just going to say, just, this like, is... You just, like, came, took the train, you ordered delivery 100%. from a restaurant, or you, you had a nice meal at a restaurant. We all here depend on immigrant labor. And what he's talking about is going after families, Wait. going after workers, and going after entire communities that I will destroy not criminals. only families. I heard talk about criminals. We, we, I think we, that we, there's we, a, real this is... a real need, though, to not to, to try and, and maybe this is where Democrats should be adding value and maybe aren't adding enough value, to really not just look at, at individuals, but to look at what this country needs and where people are actually getting jobs and working. Because our country does depend on immigrant labor in all sorts of industries. And that's something where, you know, to be honest, Donald Trump cares about um, growth, economic growth, as do um, Democrats and, and well, immigrant and, and, and activists. And so... You know, when Christina says there needs to be a thoughtful conversation about this, the rhetoric needs to go away. You do well, you, need a thoughtful you conversation. You can't say we need immigrant labor and then have people here sustaining major parts of our economy and they say, oh, by the way, we don't want you, we're going to deport you. So we really we, need to have... We, 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 an, we, we obviously are a nation a of conversation. Democrats, And we do use immigrant labor in this country, and it's very important, but you can't have a country without laws. And the, the political reality is that the American people believe the border is not secure. They believe the immigration system is a mess. They believe the politicians in Washington have failed. And they believe this has gone on and on and on. And a major reason he won the election is to clean it up. And part of cleaning it up is saying, if you came here illegally and you don't obey our laws, we're not giving you special privileges anymore. That's the political bottom line. Yeah, I, I but, it, but you know he what? Didn't he didn't clean, clean it up, up last time. Term. Right. <laughs> he didn't, right. It's not that easy. He did a better job with Joe Biden. Why um, did Joe where's Biden the wall? Throw, why did Joe Biden throw out all of his executive orders on <laughs> day one that led to this crisis? Did you call, a better job traumatizing over 5,000 children, separating I mean, how children many from their How many children has this administration lost track of? Do you know? It's tens of thousands. Yeah, the Trump tens administration made it impossible to have any way to be able to Where, where have you been the last four years, please. honestly? I mean, the Biden administration Look, nobody's done a has, job has done Scott, but, nothing you know. but make this worse. The, rea the political reaction to this in November was to go back to Trump because they believed he had it under control and could get it and under control. Jennings, I think you hear in that ending people. birthright citizenship. This has been... In a that vote, I mean. The, the, this has been a long-standing argument of some on the right who are immigration hardliners. I assume it'll be litigated. To me, the most critical issues are border security, 
deport the criminals, people with deportation orders, that's where you got to start. Okay. And the DACA thing, probably, which he said in the interview, is, is a violation. If you're limited there, you'd probably be all right. 